Let's talk a little bit more about this intermediate compound that formed here. We started out with pure A and we've got pure B, right? Now, pure A, we were allowed to dissolve some amount of B into A. All the way out into this line, we have solubility of B in A. But on this other side, right, you've got pure B right on this end over here. It does not allow any solubility of A in B, right? And then you have this funky compound that shows up in the middle, right? So what are these intermediate compounds and why do they form? So first off, what causes their formation? We, in this class, anytime something happens, it's because the free energy is lowered. We know that. But you know that G equals H minus TS. So our change in free energy, it's either coming from enthalpy or entropy, right? So what's driving it in this case? Well, when you form a compound, instead of being randomly, the atoms just everywhere, they're organizing into some sort of organized bonded structure. So that's not making it more disordered. That's increasing entropy. Uh, sorry, that's decreasing entropy. And so that can't be our driving force. It's not like entropy is driving this. So it must be something else. It must be H. It, and when we hear H in this class, enthalpy, think bonding. So the overall benefit to it from a bonding perspective must override the loss of disorder, right? So enthalpy is what causes this to happen. Now, what does it look like? Let's draw a picture of what this might look like. So we're going to consider this eutectic diagram, but with a single intermediate compound, OK? So I'm going to draw this like so. So we've got temperature here. Let's say this is magnesium, and this is lead. So this is what the actual phase diagram sort of looks like. Um, if you plot the weight percent of lead on this axis, right? Then there is a compound that exists right here in the at 81 weight percent lead. So this is at 81 weight percent. Um, and it looks like two binary eutectic diagrams back to back. What do I mean? Well, on one side, you've got a line like this. On this side, you've got a line like that, right? So you've got one eutectic right here. Recognize that eutectic. And then over here, you've got another one that looks something like this. Okay, So this looks like we took two of our binary eutectic diagrams from up here, and we just smooshed them back to back to each other right? by forming this intermediate compound. right? So this line right there, that is our intermediate compound. right? That's the intermediate compound that forms. So let's go ahead and label this diagram. Up top, we're going to know that it's liquid, so up here it's liquid. So using the 1, 2, 1, 2, 1 rule, this must be alpha over here, so that this can be liquid plus alpha, of 1, 2, 1. So let's um, label this phase over here. This one's going to be our beta phase, which makes this right there liquid plus beta. This is liquid still. So we now need a new phase. If this is beta, so that's a single phase, this must be a two phase. But this is a one phase, so this must be a two phase. Take a look at this. Is this problematic? It looks like it goes 1, 2, 2, 1. So what's happening here? We have what's called a line compound. All along this line right here, this vertical line, this is a compound. It's, and when we mean, what do we mean by a line compound? A line compound is just something that exists at a very precise window of stoichiometry. There is no solid solubility. You can't dissolve extra magnesium or lead into this compound. It exists at a fixed stoichiometry, and it doesn't allow you to uh, change that. So therefore, this phase right here would be a single phase region. Another way to think about it is imagine that you zoomed in on that line enough, it would look like a, a region, right? You just had to zoom in on it. So that is this diagram. Now we can finish labeling it. So let's give names to this. So that uh, line compound, let's call it gamma, since we've already used alpha and beta, that's gamma. That makes this gamma plus liquid. And over here, that also makes this gamma plus liquid. OK? So this would then be alpha plus gamma over here. And this would be gamma plus beta. So this is an example of an intermediate compound. Um, Again, it looks just like two back-to-back -back eutectic diagrams.